Well, howdy, y'all. I'm Cy Strikling, and it's great to be back for another photography tutorial video. In our last video, we covered a very basic but very important subject. Which type of camera to choose? A point-and-shoot camera or an interchangeable lens camera? Today, we're going to talk about another very basic but very important topic, which is if you choose to go with an interchangeable lens camera, should you go with a DSLR or a digital single lens reflex camera or a mirrorless camera, and what are the differences? DSLR cameras use the same design as the 35mm cameras from the past. One example of these is the Nikon D3500. There's a mirror inside the camera body that reflects the light coming in through the lens up into a prism and in turn into the viewfinder for you to see what you're framing up in your shot. When you press the shutter button, the mirror flips up, a shutter opens, and the light hits the image sensor, which in turn captures the final image. Let's take a look at a diagram that shows the inner workings of a DSLR camera. Part number one here is going to be your lens. That will be attached to the front of your DSLR camera, and as we learned in our last video, can be changed out as needed to fit your requirements for the shot you're trying to get. Part number two is the reflex mirror. This is the mirror that the light hits as it enters through the lens. From there, we're going to skip to part number seven, which is the pentaprism. This prism is the part that reflects the light into piece number eight, which is the eyepiece or the viewfinder. Some of these eyepieces you'll physically put your eye up to to view the image, and then there are some LCD screen viewfinders, which allow you to preview your image without taking your eyes off of things around you. In between, you have parts five and six, which are the focusing screen and the condenser lens. These two parts work to help you view the image in your viewfinder. The focusing screen helps you see your preview in focus, and the condenser lens focuses the light to a more direct beam to intensify the view in your viewfinder. Now that you've composed your image and you're ready to take the shot, when you press the shutter button, that mirror, part number two, flips up out of the way, so now the light can aim directly back into the camera. At the same time, the shutter, part number three, opens up for as long as your camera shutter speed is set to, and while it's opened, the light finally hits part number four, the image sensor. This is where the sensor collects the light and processes what it's seeing as an actual image onto your memory card. So now, let's discuss what a mirrorless camera is. An example of one is the Sony A6100. In a mirrorless camera, light enters through the lens and goes directly onto your image sensor. This captures a preview of the image to display on your rear LCD viewfinder or through the EVF or electronic viewfinder. As you can see here, there are a lot less components to a mirrorless camera than there are in a DSLR. Also, the electronic viewfinder on a mirrorless camera is similar to seeing things on a TV screen, like a movie. It allows you to actually see how the changes you make to things such as shutter speed and aperture on the fly will affect your image. On a DSLR, you have to adjust your settings, take the picture, and hope your image comes out the way you want. Otherwise, you have to make some more changes, take the picture again, and then see how it came out with those changes. On a mirrorless camera, it takes that guesswork or science out of it. When it comes to the size and weight of both types of cameras, DSLRs tend to be somewhat larger as they need to fit more moving parts inside. As such, DSLRs also tend to be slightly heavier. Mirrorless cameras have a simpler, smaller construction and generally are lighter and will fit better in a camera bag with the rest of your gear. Until recently, DSLR cameras have been superior in their autofocus and low light shooting qualities. However, mirrorless cameras have really come a long way. While nowadays most mirrorless cameras have faster autofocus speeds, some DSLRs still remain superior when it comes to autofocusing on fast moving subjects, such as sports or wildlife. Both cameras can shoot at very fast shutter speeds and capture images quickly, but mirrorless cameras have the edge when it comes to snapping multiple photos in quick succession. Not in all cases, of course, there are high and low ends to both types of cameras, but as a general rule, mirrorless cameras will be better for shooting faster moving subjects. This isn't really a very long video today. There's really not a whole lot to say about DSLR versus mirrorless. I kind of wanted to give you the basics about the differences between the two. 
But at the end of the day, it comes down to a personal preference for which one you go with. There's pros and cons to both. Some people like the bigger feel of a DSLR. It fits in their hand better, and it's just more what they're used to. Some people with smaller hands tend to like the mirrorless cameras better because they aren't as bulky. They're a little bit lighter. Uh, They're generally faster and quieter as well. But at the end of the day, it really comes down to a personal preference. Before you choose one, make sure that you get a hands-on feel for it. Because the type of camera you choose is very personal. And if you're not comfortable with the camera that you choose, then photography is going to be more of a chore than something enjoyable. I myself happen to shoot with both. I have a DSLR and a mirrorless camera. I really do like both, and I choose which one I'm going to use based on the lens that I'm going to use. Because some lenses are bigger and heavier, and I don't want to pair those with a DSLR that's also going to be bigger and heavier. I want to slim down as much as possible and use the mirrorless for that. I hope I was able to give you some good insight into the different types of interchangeable lens cameras, DSLRs, and mirrorless. With this information, I hope you choose the camera that fits your needs the best, and that's about all I have for you today. If you liked this video, please make sure to hit the thumbs up down below, and if you like my content between the photography tutorial videos and my gaming streams, please make sure to hit that subscribe button, share it with all your friends, and also comment down below. I really do like taking all the comments into consideration to get your feedback to try to make these videos better and more enjoyable for you. Thanks everybody for coming to yet another video of mine. I'm Cy Strikling, and I'll see y'all later.